Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and we are going to Pluto with a big rocket. That's what I've decided to title this after people said that Pluto Direct wasn't quite accurate because we are going to be flying by Jupiter. For those who are not aware, this is my monument rocket uh, which was designed originally to lift a Saturn V fully fueled to orbit and we're going to use it to launch a monumental Pluto mission. Originally this rocket was made out of procedural parts and a whole bunch of engines. Uh, there are 40, well the equivalent of 41 M1 engines on the core and on the boosters a total of 64 RD270 engines. Those burning UDMH and NTO whereas the M1s burn hydrogen and oxygen. That's why we've got enormous quantities of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen there. Uh, so yeah, it is a tall rocket as you can see. I I, I tried to get it on the pad but uh, it didn't quite work out because hangar extender isn't big enough and it just wanted to be here. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Uh, th this is where it ended up being and it seems happy right there. So yeah, we are standing at, it actually doesn't show the weight, weight right now. We are uh, 52,000 tons. Um, at some point I want to make a sea platform for this. Not underwater, not sea dragons. Sea dragons, small. Anyway, uh, sea dragons, just a silly idea. But but something like, you know, like, like they're thinking about for, for Starship uh, with the Super Heavy launcher. Uh, I, I want to see if that's possible with Kerbal Constructs, I'm not sure. I don't have Katniss uh, Cape Canaveral in here because, well, this, this particular install is sort of customized. Again, all of my installs are customized to particular purposes. And in this case, we are intending to go very far with things. So I've decided to put real exoplanets. So we've got Tau Ceti, Tea Garden Star, Trappist, and uh, Barnard Star and that sort of thing, Alpha Centauri. So yeah, um, I wasn't sure whether I had enough RAM space to also put in Katniss's Cape Canaveral. Uh, it's uh, tough to fit everything in sometimes. Okay, so yeah, well let's see about this launch. The rocket is much quicker on the frame rates because I've made these custom parts in Blender in order to merge all the engines, but the mission itself is still a whole bunch of parts. Not that many, actually. Um, 153 parts altogether, this is. And most of that's the mission. So, anyway, uh, you can see the Monument Launcher. I think the video name is Monument Launcher Reborn, if you want a further description of this or other videos where I feature it. But for now, we are going to launch to orbit and see if we can catch a good transfer over to Jupiter. If it turns out I'm a little bit too early, which I might be, I think I'm early for the Voyager window, which is what I'm, I was aiming for, August 1977. I think it's August 26th or something like that. So if so, I'll just time warp away from the rocket so it doesn't boil off too much. The hydrogen, oh, there's a hydrogen stage here with, well, uh, not Nerva, but Timberwind engines. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay, so SAS on, uh, yeah, let's turn this off for now. SAS on, ignition. Again, it's 105 engines, actually. I just merged them. Wait for it. Uh, I'm watching this current acceleration to see when it hits 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. It's gonna be loud. So everything below this line is something I made in Blender. And then we've got procedural fairings. Inside these fairings are my Timberwinds, the ones I modeled. Uh, that's a procedural tank. Procedural fairings up there. Unfortunately, the plumes are still really, really small. I have to figure that out. So we've got six Kerbals in. 
and we've got 30 years of food and oxygen, water, we've got recyclers to make it up to 30 years. But six crew. No lander right now, this is just a test run. Shader on the fairing seem to be having trouble. We're past the speed of sound now. It's not actually louder when I zoom in. Let's get a sense of the details. If I zoom in uh, close enough, you can see little rivets. <laughs> okay, getting ready for booster set. And separation. Oh, my ears. <laughs> uh, still haven't fixed uh, the coupler thing, but uh, look at the shaders deciding to give up on the boosters. <laughs> uh. It's like the shaders are doing too much work. Well, off that goes. I'll still call it the Ray's asterisk. It's close enough. Had trouble with the fairings. Uh, probably will still have trouble with the fairings. These are procedural fairings because um, I had made custom fairings that would fit on top of this stage, but obviously we have another stage here, uh, which is just all hydrogen with the Timberwind engines here. They're Timberwind 250s in this case. Okay, getting ready for first stage SEP. This time we don't have the AJ60 Separatrons. I was wondering uh, when I tested out this rework of the Monument rocket, why we were getting better performance. One reason might be the lack of such heavy Separatrons. So this actually has 13 M1 engines. I didn't make them as complicated as the M1 model from FASA, just simple cones. There were enough polygons. This is all one part, including the engines, so... We're actually going to a higher orbit somewhat unintentionally just to give the stage enough time, but it might be good for the nuclear stage anyway, because it's got a long, long burn time, uh, despite having five Timberwind 250 engines in that fairing there, uh, which is as much as I thought I could cram on. Well, I could probably fit more, but it looked too gaudy. But yeah, it's still a long burn time. It's uh, basically 20 minutes. So yeah, uh, this uh, is just to turn and sell the fuel down its methane oxygen engines, uh, my own ED ones. So previously we had tried this in the Pluto Direct videos and I discovered that a lot of things didn't work. The life support wasn't working quite right and also our ion engines weren't working quite right in time warp. Of course, uh, taking a look at the burn time again, um, well, it's not giving me the right uh, time for the ion engines right now, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, I don't think uh, even in time warp that would be workable, but I think it's just uh, 100 days or so. So then in time warp we can handle it. And yeah, I've checked it out this time, and this is a fresh install, and I think it's going to work. Okay, close to making orbit now. Whoop, camera flip and shut down 299 by 283 I think I'll do the upper fairings first before we separate off the stage so off they go okay they're clean <laughs> and you can see that the mission looks tiny here compared to the rocket right but it's huge in the SPH <laughs> it extends uh, through the entire SPH I mean, that's a B330, and that's one of the larger Tundra Kerbatats uh, sized up, and you can see the cupolas, and uh, there's a huge tank of food. 
And then we've got docking hub. Uh, that's when I finally add the lander, we'll need that. There's all the water and nitrogen and oxygen here. And then that's all the xenon fuel. And then we've got the reactor here. Of course, we need a reactor. It's relatively tiny, though. And we'll, yeah, I guess we can extend the radiators now. And then we've got the ion engines. Okay. So, but anyway, let's just stage off that stage. We stand no chance of selling the fuel down on it. It's got no ullage rockets. The RCS on here is pretty, I mean, it's tough to get RCS thrusters that could turn this. So, we don't blame it or anything. So we need a Jupiter encounter that allows us to get a slingshot to Pluto. Now we could go to Pluto directly, but that would require 40 years just to get there. Going via Jupiter takes about 15 years, maybe less, but then it also takes more Delta V to slow down once we get to Pluto. So it's a trade-off. But that's if you're using ion engines, it's a good trade-off because carrying the extra food, water, and oxygen is heavier than carrying the xenon gas to slow down. I think we're probably too early. Let's see, let me clear this off and see what MechJib has to say. I sort of expected this anyway. Okay, so lowest delta V, 26 days. So I'm just gonna turn away from this and hope boil off doesn't happen and we'll do it in 26 days. On the next try, I'll make sure to to launch at that time. So we're talking about um, basically September 3rd. So I'll make a note of that. Okay, uh, to the tracking station for now. Of course, food, water, and oxygen is getting consumed during this time still. I should turn on the water recyclers. Okay, starting the water recyclers. Should be more than enough for six. Well, so good news and bad news. Good news, we're, we can get there in 10 years, 209 days. Bad news, that seems a lot, that seems rather fast, doesn't it? <laughs> um, uh, so how much is it going to take to slow down in that case? Oh, okay. 13,423. Um, we've got 13,131. Well, wouldn't that be the way it goes? Uh, 209 days. Anyway, we'll, we'll check out all the systems and we'll see. Maybe we can finagle something a little bit better. Maybe this isn't the real end result. We'll make the burn. It's not going to be very accurate trying to do the transfer burn, given that we've got a 20-minute stage to do it. These engines can provide the 7,058 that we need. We've got a little bit extra there. But again, it takes 20 minutes to do that. By the way, right now our mass is 2,840 tons. <laughs> We're going to be pointing more at the surface than at space. Doesn't seem particularly efficient, but again, that's why I said that it'd be better if we get into a somewhat higher orbit, though. So I anticipated this. So I'm going to sell the fuel down and start the APS engines. And ignition. Are they going at all? Uh, maybe... Oh, the feed pressure is too low. Oh well. Okay, so that plan is a bust. I guess the RCS seems to be good enough to sell fuel down for the main engines anyway. We can get rid of those little EE ones later. Ignition? I actually should have started earlier. These nuclear engines take a while to spool up. 
Well, it's looking like we pretty much hit the right sort of periapsis because here we are at 158 kilometers on the periapsis now. We've still got some heading down to go, it looks like. Uh, and we might not finish this on this stage just due to the sheer inaccuracy of it all, but maybe, maybe that's misstating it though. We'll take a look at the situation closer to the end. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> uh, you know what? We have we have more ignitions with these anyway. Um, that doesn't seem like the most pleasing thing to do. Um, let's plot something else. It looks like we need a normal burn. Maybe it's just going to be an ion engine thing. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so we will be on the ions and everything. Let's actually eject off the prior stage, the nuclear engines, and then see what we've got going for us. We do have some RCS thrusters this time. Not a whole lot though, but just enough to help with maneuvers. Well, we have ions. They do, as usual, practically nothing, as they should. Microns per second squared. 0.0002g of acceleration. Okay, so after much finagling, we've got an encounter with Pluto in 22 years, and that's going to cost the 875 meter per second burn uh, with the ions. And let's see if this approach yields a slower sort of... Our Jupiter periapsis is really weak, really far out. Um, which you would expect given the long time that it takes to get there, but well, we've got 30 years and I mean, we're not bringing them back this time around. This was just a test, but let's see how much it's going to take to slow down given the slow approach, given how long we're taking to get there. It seems like that's getting close. All right. So that's orbit with only 4,300. Well, all right, uh, let's see, but obviously this would be too slow if we were planning to come back. So in 26 days we've got a node, but um, 875, can we do it in that time? Who knows, it's going to be all sorts of weird ion engine stuff. I guess the question is, we'll get out of Earth SOI first, and then we're going to see whether we can do the burn with any sort of accuracy with the ion engines and whether the time warp thing works after all. Okay, starting the ions. And we will have to be on SAS, particularly for persistent rotation to do, I guess dynamic will be fine. Currently 636 tons, by the way. Okay, coming out of physical time warp. Waiting for our controls to settle and real time warp. We see xenon gas being whoop, being consumed and well, there's still ion engines, so at this time warp rate we won't be able to see much else going on, but here we see the delta V Starting to go down, the apoapsis going up over there, and oral period. Okay. So, much more of that will be necessary. Okay, well I'm gonna hold off, hold off, hold off. Time warp to pass the node and do the rest. Probably we're gonna have another correction, but if the amount necessary for capture is correct, then we're not too bad off on that. Mm, that curve looks a little bit different, doesn't it? 
Oh, it's going higher. Okay, let's hold off on that. Hold off. Okay, there's another encounter. 19 years now. Oh, we'll have to do another correction on the opposite side of Jupiter, I'm sure. So, 201 days. Let's time warp to this node. 90 meters per second is mild compared to the one we just did. We do have boil off of the methane and oxygen, th though, so eventually we're not going to have that for RCS. Hmm. Forgot about that. Though we do have some insulation on that tank. Apparently not quite enough. Okay, uh oh, we went past. Oh, node is wandering away. Let's throttle down, throttle down, throttle down. Okay, so let's get rid of that. No, oh, that's a good enough start, and let's see how much it's going to take to make orbits. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, Sharon periapsis as well, though Sharon is apparently trying to shoot us out. Uh, 4,900. Well, we'll keep that. It's unlikely we're going to get quite that, though that's, that's amusing, isn't it? Okay, so after a year and 300 days, which is after our Jupiter encounter, so let's fly by Jupiter. Okay, there's Jupiter. We are approaching at a safe distance. But we're not getting particularly close, so... Okay, we are on our way out. Actually, there hasn't been much boil off. Oh, we're further away from the sun. Well, okay, I guess it's really colder out here, so we don't have as much boil off. Makes sense. Okay, the food, water, and oxygen is all getting recalculated. And we want to turn to the node now. Yeah, so we might end up with methane and oxygen left over after all, which is good, because otherwise it takes a lot to turn this. It's got reaction wheels, but not there. they take a long time. Okay, ions. Let's see where we're at now. Are we... we have an encounter. Okay. But it's a little bit low. Okay, that looks good. So we'll do that 0.5 meters per second in 15 years now. Now we've got the long time warp. We've basically only spent three years so far. Now we've got 15 years to wait. And this is how everything is looking. Water recycler is a little bit underwhelming. Let me double check. Are you both working? Maybe I need wastewater capacity. Let's dump some wastewater. I mean, technically, it should take the wastewater and process it, though. Or maybe the waste is full. Well, that estimate is just wrong with this. Consumption is right, so I guess it'll be all right since the consumption is right here. We'll keep time warping through that inaccurate number, uh, but it does pull us out. Okay, well, we'll let it uh, rebalance itself and figure it out. Hmm, our water reserves do not seem to be what I thought they were. We've got 11 years left, and we're we're pretty far down. I mean, it was replenishing, and then now it's taking it all away from me. I don't understand. No, it dealt with the wastewater. I guess I have to keep an eye on that wastewater and dump the waste when I can. Maybe I should have had some more space for waste. Eventually, we can use the USI stuff to create fertilizer and grow plants in something. I don't understand how the water can be going down that quickly when we still have more than... I don't understand. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a weird calculation it's trying to do. 
as we get closer to Pluto, of course, we're going to need to start the effective retro burn fairly soon. Still updating the food. The food isn't where it ought to be either. It should be more than halfway down, but we'll see whether it gets there. Okay, well, let's start out and see if I can manage this. It's awkward doing a retro burn node or speed matching node a hundred days early because ion engines. Okay, let's reconsider this. Um, that's a pretty high Pluto periapsis, so hold on there. Okay, so seeing how we sort of started the previous one a little bit early, I went until uh, SOI entry minus about 40 days. Our water is still doing weird things, especially since the wastewater should have gotten recycled and, you know, the waste part dumped as waste. The waste part is getting dumped as waste. I mean, we see that, see that rebalancing properly, but I'm not getting water out of it for some reason. Um, and we are turning. Okay. Uh, our water is now worryingly diminishing. Mm, well, water recyclers should still be running. And it seems to change with the amount of time warp I do. Okay, Pluto encounters floating off again. I don't know, I'll try dumping waste here. Well, there it starts to pick up the wastewater recycling, but... And then it produces wastewater. It's confusing to me. Oh, now it's producing water. <laughs> well, we might just barely make it. I don't know. I think we should just enter the SOI and start things. The water thing is just giving me all sorts of grief. And they died of dehydration just as we entered Pluto SOI. So I don't know, the, the water thing is weird. Definitely not going the way I wanted it to. So that's an initial thing, and then after that we have to do how much now? A thousand, so that should be doable. So I handle at least a part of the minor correction and uh, trying to start off with the main retro burn. Though maybe it's a little bit too early for that. But there's a lot I don't understand about the food, water, and oxygen situation. I thought we were only carrying 30 years worth, first of all, and if that's the case, then given that it's taken about 20 years to get here, we should have used more than this. It looks more like we were carrying 50 years or so of the oxygen and food, but the water is peculiar. We should have been recycling that wastewater. Also, I swear we have more Delta V than I expected. Oh, because we consume food, water, and oxygen, that's right. We don't need to carry as much xenon gas then. We should just carry more water, obviously. But by this point, we're much lighter than we were fully loaded. Slowing down is quite tricky when it takes this long. Okay, well, let's uh, save periapsis 14 hours, and there's Pluto. Oh, and there's Sharon, right? Very dark. Well, we don't need to be too close necessarily, we just really need to capture. How much more do we need? Less than 200. Okay, that periapsis, well, it was steady, and then uh, I think 
Persistent Thrust snapped us to retrograde, which is fine at this point. We still have Xenon gas consumption, so we are applying thrust. And we are passing Pluto, hopefully temporarily. Hmm, we may need chemical engines. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, we're like this now. Let's see. Retro. We only needed 200. Why is it so hard? When do we leave Pluto SOI? Well, 110 days. Well, the Pluto escape keeps going up and up as far as time is concerned. So I think we'll capture. We just need to boost our periapsis and come back in and hope it's not like a few years to get back to periapsis or something. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a super loose orbit around Pluto and it's gonna take us a hundred, well, okay, 86 days to get back to periapsis. Let's just do that. We're like a little Pluto comet now. We're almost out of the RCS fuel, in fact. So we certainly didn't have too much of that. Just enough, basically. Okay, five day orbit. Still really high above Pluto, but here we are. And I'll leave it here, because obviously we haven't been successful with the Kerbals. But let's take a look and try to answer a question that few have ever had to answer before. Which is, wow, we've got some other options here. But if we were to, wrong way around. If we were to go from Pluto back to Earth. Okay, let me just go with a temporary thing. Is that the best thing? 4,000 meters per second only. But the travel time is 44 years. So, you know, the Voyager window makes it easier to get out here. But now we have to figure out how to get back to Jupiter, I guess, maybe. Only 2,000 to get to Jupiter, but that's travel time of 50 years. <laughs> that doesn't help anything. Mm. How do you get a slingshot on the way back? That's the problem. A Holman transfer between Pluto and Neptune is just 541, but we don't want a Holman transfer. We want like a severe transfer back. Let's say we want an emergency transfer back to Jupiter. Here, first of all, trying to break this over is crazy. Oh, nothing good is coming of this. <laughs> uh, hmm. All right. Well, that's going to have to be something I answer for myself off camera. I think this is going to take a while for me to figure out as far as getting back from Pluto. But it is a question. But next time I want to see if we can actually land on Pluto. And so we need to carry a lander and hopefully have Kerbals on board. So with that as the goal, and at least us getting into orbit around Pluto this time, dark as it is, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.